welcome to Houston Tilton University Thursday Chapel Hour. It's Thursday and it's time to give God some praise up in here. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, in the middle here it says something about a face and I'm looking at a hat and some sunshades and I don't know how to take it off. So I'm hoping that you're not seeing what I am looking at. At any rate, again, we want to welcome you to the Thursday Chapel Hour on the campus of Houston Tillotson University. All right, we're here to give God some praise. And as we do, we appreciate you being here always. We hope that we have Houston Tillotson in the house. And all the guests who might share with us, we're glad to see you again this week. Hope that you enjoyed our senior graduation celebration last week. And to all those seniors, I want to say again, congratulations. And we want to ask you to join us with our chapel praise song. If you've been with us the last several weeks, you are annoyed by now. So I'm going to ask you to come on and join us as we sing. I'm blessed. And I'm ready. And I'm here to praise the Lord. I'm blessed and I'm ready and I'm here to bless the Lord. Come on in. Lift your hands. Grab a seat. Do your dance. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. And it's time for chow. Come on now and join us as we together as we sing together I'm blessed I'm blessed I'm blessed and I'm ready I'm blessed I'm ready I'm here to bless the Lord I'm blessed I'm blessed I'm blessed I'm ready I'm here to bless the Lord come on in Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Grab a seat. Do your dance. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's time for chapel. One more time. One more time. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm to begin with our concerns for the community. Not me today. And before we do that, I'm going to ask, could you bow with me for a word of prayer? You tell me, gracious God, we come right now and always in the spirit of thanksgiving. Thank you, gracious God, for your goodness towards us. Thank you, dear God, for this particular moment in time when we have gathered uh, in the name of Houston Tillotson University to offer you our best in praise and worship. We ask, gracious God, that you would be with us in the midst as we seek to, to give you our praise and worship, that you would edify our time together, and that you would bless all of those who are part of your service. Move, gracious God, as only you can, and always by the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Give God some praise up in here. Praise God for you. I uh, don't have any announcements today, as you uh, well know, commencement, uh, commencement, 
Uh, seniors graduated last week. Seniors graduated last week. They completed their final exams. They are now officially graduates of Houston Tillotson University and can now carry the name We Are Alums. I want to give God praise, praise for that. Uh, with that, uh, school has ended. We are in preparation for um, summer school and, and uh, preparing for, for the fall semester. I don't know if it's too late, but if you have not yet registered for your classes, I want to encourage you to do so. If, uh, if you've passed the deadline, I'm going to suggest that you do a little begging and pleading, and maybe, just maybe, God might open a door. Uh, but we have been in the midst of uh, registration. Uh, I want to just remind not only the HT community, but all who might be uh, engaging with us this morning, uh, to, to, to go in, go online, and complete the 2020 census form. It's important that we complete the 2020 census form. It's how monies are allocated for special needs. It's how monies are allocated in communities to meet the needs of, of various constituencies around the country. So please go in, complete your 2020 census form. Uh, you can do that at mycensus, 2020census.gov. Let's get that right. You can do that at my2020census.gov, my2020census.gov, you can go in and you can complete that census form. also want to take a, a moment and uh, invite you to share with Houston Tillotson University in our COVID-19 support fund. Uh, this is COVID season. This is an unprecedented time. This is a time not only for HT, but for universities across the country. Are, 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 are experiencing lack. Our residence halls are, are not filled, yet we still um, have expenses coming in. Uh, we're still meeting the needs of students and we are still preparing uh, for what is to come uh, in our future. So uh, we want to be able to sustain during this COVID time, but more importantly or as important is that once COVID-19 is over with, we want to be able to be alive, vibrant, and well. So again, you can, you can contribute to the COVID-19 Support Fund for Houston Tillotson University. You can do that by going to the Houston Tillotson website. Uh, when you go to the website, uh, you can go to COVID-19 page, and I believe that the first page that you go to right now is COVID-19 Support Fund. Uh, if it's not, you click on that, and once you click on the link for the Support Fund, it'll take you to the page, and it'll, you'll have all the information that you need to be able to uh, contribute to the support of Houston Tilton University. Uh, we love you, we appreciate you, and we pray that God will use you as a blessing to Houston Tillotson University. COVID-19 Support Fund HT webpage, all the information that you need, you'll find there. Be blessed. Ah, and I believe that's our announcements for today. And again, as we've had in the past, you will be able to witness a couple of our HT students, uh, those students that your funds, uh, as you uh, should you decide to, to support uh, those students that are assisted and uh, so that we can have the best facility in the state of Texas, actually in the United States and around the world uh, on the Houston Tilson campus. Uh, today, we have with us Raven, Carter, and Derek. Derek, Derek Lewis, Derek Lewis, I believe it's the second. If y'all are here, why don't you join me? Raven Carter and Derek Lewis. Hey, Raven. Hey. How you, how you doing, girl? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing good. Derek, if you're around, join us, sir. You're doing pretty good. Fantastic. It looks like you're in your car. You are, in my car, yes, you are in your car. You're in your car. You know when we start saying, you know what? You you might be getting out too much, but 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 you you and God got this, right? Me and God got this. I'm taking precautions, but yeah, when I have to, I sometimes I do have to get out a little bit. But you're taking precautions and you're being safe. Yes, sir. Okay, and that's what we want for everyone. Everyone, if you're out and about, take precautions and be safe. Thank you for that for that word. Hey, Derek, what's up? 
I'm doing good. How you doing? Can't complain, man. <laughs> so, so I'm going to take that can't complain, man. It's, it's, it's all things are well. All things are well. Um, who, Mr. South? You what? I can't complain. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Well, I am glad to have both of you with us. And for a moment, I'd like to do introduce them. Now, I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, I know some things about each of them. Uh, and actually, Derek also sent me something on last evening, but he sent it on my cell phone. And my cell phone is what's doing the videoing. So, I just told him this morning, I'm going to wing it. And anything that I leave out that they need to share, they'll do that. I'm going to start with Raven. We have with us Raven Carter. Raven Carter is going to be a senior. Just finished her junior year. Yes. Graduating and graduating senior. Ah, is that, is, 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 does that make a difference? It's a difference. You believe it's a big difference? I, I'm going to believe it with you. So Raven says she is a graduating senior uh, class of 2021. Uh, Raven is very active on the HC campus. Uh, I like to, 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 to top those who've been a part of religious life and, and, and campus ministry. I believe it was last year she served as the um, first year experience, first year experience sophomore retreat coordinator, uh, designing uh, that retreat with some assistance from other student leaders. Uh, Raven um, is active in other areas on, on campus. Uh, and she's going to take what some of those other areas are. Uh, I know she's running for a couple of queen positions. Raven is, is quite smart and quite handy. Uh, Raven has a t-shirt business. We went on a spring break mission trip. And Raven designed the t-shirts for us. And, and they, they were awesome. I started to wear it today just to show you what kind of work Raven, Raven does. Uh, I've looked online and recently. I've seen her modeling uh, how to dress uh, frugally and and look good. Is that is that way of saying that? I'll be frugal. Yeah, I did a thrift store, a thrift store kind of whole thing. Okay, and and and, and, and all I can say is she worked it. She did. It. She was she was awesome. Uh, so we have Raven, and then we have Derek Lewis the second, right? <laughs> Derek Derek is actually grad. Yeah, Derek is actually graduate. Uh, Derek graduated in 2018. So Derek has been out a couple of years. Um, invited Derek back one. Now let me introduce Derek and then share why. Uh, Derek, um, a graduate of Houston Tilton University, while he was at HT, he organized, actually chartered the NAACP chapter that's on campus now. Uh, it's alive, it's vibrant, and this young man took it and he was dynamic. Did some amazing things. In fact, he was involved in the city of Austin and so dynamic that before graduating, um, the mayor named a day for, for Derek. Uh, so Derek was, was very active around the city of Austin on the campus of Houston Tilton University. And before graduating, I'm quite sure he want a lot of us to know is that he uh, also became a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Uh, Derek has since graduating, he is now working with the national office of NAACP in Washington, D.C. Uh, it's a fulfillment, I would think, of a dream to, to have charted a, a chapter on campus, and not only charter a chapter, but after leaving, after graduating, to be able to work in the national office in Washington. That's amazing, and, and kudos to you, Derek. Uh, and because of, uh, of that, I wanted to invite him here today. Um, today, I've invited him here because on last weekend, I was, and I've gotten to where I, I go through Facebook a lot. I go through Instagram a lot. And so on last week, I was scrolling through Instagram, and I saw none other than Miss Raven Carter. And she was preparing to run. Uh, and uh, I'm sure all of you know, uh, it's been in the headlines, especially if you're looking at world news, uh, the incident with Ahmad Arbery, uh, the young man who was, for the best way I can put it, was gunned down in, in, um, in Georgia. Uh, and she was preparing to march. She had a couple of friends with her, and she was encouraging others, and at the same time, she offered a prayer. 
that pricks something within me to say, you know what, we are an HBCU. That's something that could be very striking for us. And so I wanted to invite her on just to share why she marched um, and to hear her interest in the reason that she connected to, to Ahmad. And then of course, uh, Derek is a civil rights activist. He was that before he left the city and now as a part of the national office of NAACP, he establishes um, student organizations on campuses throughout the country. So he does a lot of, he does a lot of traveling when there is no COVID-19. Uh, but certainly I thought it would be interesting to have his perspective. One, as a student who is a part, and once you're a part of HT, you're always a part of HT. Uh, so who is a part of the Houston Tillotson family and understands the nature of our campus and now being a part of NAACP to come back and just, and just share a few thoughts. And so I have a few questions for them uh, before we move into the sermon for, for the day. Uh, and one, I want to just start with, with Raven. Um, what was it that made you decide to want to run for a month? student, um, as a young black man who perhaps has to deal with this on a daily basis, uh, what are your thoughts as you think on, on this? My um, immediate thoughts are my immediate I'm going to ask you, sure, I, mean, I, I think you can be heard, but speak up a little bit so I make sure that you can, you're picked up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my immediate thoughts and my immediate reaction is, is, is anger. Um, it's, it's fear, it is disappointment, but it's also um, inspirational as well. And inspiring in a sense, like, oh, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not praising the death, death, but also inspiring me to keep moving forward in this fight. Um, because of this fight and this work that we do to improve the material conditions of black bodies in America is hard. Um, but it, it's, it's not only just hard work, but it's hard work as well. So for, for me personally, um, I did cry. I personally had to cry. Um, to see the consistent black killings and 
to, to see the black killings of black bodies, of black males, of black women, of people of color, and nobody's being held accountable to it, it's a problem. And it's not just a problem that just happened out of nowhere. This is by design. This is a long-term problem that has happened since 1865, 18, 18, um, um, June 19th of 1865, when all slaves were free two years later after the announcement was made. So this problem that that we are in right now, the structure that we are in, we are in this system of white supremacy. And in this system of white supremacy, we, um, we as individuals who understand what a just system looks like, have to be the ones to get involved to make that action to then make the change that we want to see. Okay, can I ask a question about you? How, how do, and what does involvement look like? Um, we say we have to get, 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 get involved, but I'm hearing, I think I hear you saying it's a systemic issue. So it runs deeper than just this white fellow on the street shooting somebody. It's a systemic issue. Uh, how do we get involved uh, and how do we, or are they, are, 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 are young African American folk, students, males, uh, engaged enough to, to be involved? What, what, what does being involved look like? What can we do? Uh, to help make the change. Understanding, I'm one who believes that uh, as long as there's, there, there, there's life to uh, eradicate uh, racism, other kinds of isms, uh, it's, going to be, it's going to be difficult. Uh, but certainly we can make the world a better place. So what does, what does, what does, what does that look like? What does it get involved with? Um, so involved is, 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 a, is very vague, right? Because the, the first the first form of, of anybody being involved is, is racial awareness, right? So even even if I'm just sharing a post, that's that's me getting involved. But also there's like this this little this little notion that there are people who, who work on both sides, those who actually do the work, and those who just talk about it. Mm -hmm. And those who are, my, 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 my boss said this before, those who talk about it and scream and, and kind of like they, they have that anger, those are the ones who are considered to be the mob or the bride. The ones who talk about it and be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired of this, but I'm not going to vote, okay. right? Or I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, not going to do that, I'm not going to do that, I, I have to do this, that, or, or I have to do that. When, but another time that we can be using the time of essence to to act towards that. So instead of just race and awareness, there are a lot of different ways, right? We talk mm -hmm. about the presidential election. For me personally, I'm all about local elections. Right, um, in, in the U.S. and we're talking about making change, it's a bottom-up structure, right? So what are you doing to involve, what are you doing to get involved locally? Are okay. you meeting with your city officials? Are you meeting with your city council, right? If Walmart is coming to put up a petition, I mean, to, 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 to put up a permit to build up, um, to, to, to build up new houses in, in um, East Austin and they hold an, and they're holding a community forum, and they're saying, hey, I want you to come out to the meeting so that we can hear your so, so, so that we can hear your input. Right? And the problem is, is that those they are not the ones with the problem. The ones with the problems are the ones who are in those elected positions. But going past those, that is beyond that, is understanding that you are registered to vote, that you vote, and that you understand who who actually holds the power. Okay. In this case, with with Ahmad Arbery, we know that the district attorney holds the power and held the power for a long time, which is why his murderers, so yes, I'm saying murderers, got away the, the way that they did. Okay. Up until now. Yeah, and then I guess that's where I have, have, a, have a friend, uh, Gary, uh, Gary, Gary Cobb, he's a district attorney, have, was a district, uh, yeah. uh, district attorney in, uh, um, in, in Austin, and always said pros prosecuting attorney has the power. So what I'm hearing is that we can get involved, one, Exercise your right to vote. Don't and, and it's one to register, but don't just register. Vote. Uh, get educated about the issues. Is that right? Um, and and be present as much as possible in those places where decisions are being made. Is that all right? Um, Raven, would you like to, to, to add to that in some way?
Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that meeting people where they are makes a huge difference. Okay, so I meet people where they are and... Uh, okay, one last comment and then we're going to have to close it out for the sake of time. But what I'm giving also, along with the other issues, uh, let's not disregard potential allies. That there are other folks from other communities who will join the fight as well and they are needed in this, in this, in this fight, right? So let's not also disrespect, disregard those who would be allies with us. Uh, I'm going to ask one last word from each of you. It needs to be quick, but one last word from each of you as we, as we close this, this piece out. Uh, Derek, uh, 35 seconds. <laughs> Derek. Okay. One last word? Yes, sir. Oh, got you. Uh, so I guess I'll use this time to raise more awareness of what we are doing on a national level with NAACP. We just launched a kind of campaign called We Are Been Dying. This is raising awareness of the black disparities in our communities when it comes to health, when it comes to inequity, but also when it comes to killings as we are seeing um, at this current moment. So to find more information, um, go to NAACP.org slash coronavirus and join the coming with NAACP. I like that. That, that. that was a good plug, buddy. <laughs> That's what's raving. Well, thank you both for being here. Thank you both for your wonderful words of wisdom and your perspective. Uh, Derek, I hope you continue to enjoy your time in the D.C. area uh, and looking for some great things from you uh, coming out of D.C. and the NAACP. And Raven, we're looking to see you back on campus in, 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 in a few weeks as you begin matriculating your last year as a graduating senior uh, as, a part of, as a part of the HT family. Appreciate you. Love you, and we'll talk to you real soon. All right, thank you. Bye bye. All right, let's give Raven and Derek a round of applause. All right, praise God for them. Uh, indeed, two dynamic individuals. Uh, time is pressing this morning. Hope that you enjoyed hearing from two of our students. And as we prepare for the word for today, want to have you listen to Deserve It by J.J. Harrison uh, and Youthful Praise. We own no rights to this music. We are sharing it for the edification of our students and faculty staff on the campus of Houston Tilton University and all of those who would be blessed by it.
a portion of you deserve it by J.J. Harrison and youthful praise. Had to cut it short this morning. I uh, enjoyed talking, enjoyed talking with um, Raven and, and Derek so much that we sort of went a little over time, but that's okay. Uh, God has a blessing in store for us. Hope that um, you deserve it with J.J. Harrison and youthful praise has sort of refocused us and prepared us for the Word of God. Today, coming from the book of Psalm, and as we say, if you have your uh, iPad with you, if you have your phone, get find your Bible app and turn with us, please, to Psalm 30. Psalm 30. And Psalm 30 reads as follows. And I sure hope that what I'm looking at is not what you see. I see a hat and glasses, and you don't know how to get it off, but to God be the glory. Uh, Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths, and you did not let my enemies gloat over me. O Lord, my God, I, I called to you for help, and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me up from the grave. You spared me from going down into the pit. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. From his, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may endure for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. O Lord, when you favored me, you made my mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. What gain is there in my destruction? Am I going down to the pit full of dust, praise you? Will, uh, will it proclaim your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, my, be my help. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. What for you to consider for something to hang your hat on, uh, when you find yourselves by yourself a little later today, a time of perhaps um, reflection, um, just that quiet space, uh, a reason for forever thanksgiving, a reason for forever thanksgiving. In my daily devotional time last week, actually it was on Friday of last week, God led me to this particular passage of Scripture. As I read the passage, it really spoke to my heart, and I, I really couldn't understand why, but every morning that I got up, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and every morning that I got up, I was led back to this particular passage. On Tuesday, it came to me that I was to share a word from this passage on today. Uh, as God spoke, what I begin to understand is that it really coincides with our previous message, with our previous messages that were part of that series. You see, if you indeed accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've invited Him into your life, if you understand the power of uh, power that you have through Christ, if we, if you are striving to to meet the expectations of Christ, and the operative word there is meet. Uh, striving, striving, striving to meet the expectations of Christ. Uh, and you ought to be able uh, to give God perpetual praise. And more importantly so, when you realize that through all of those means that you discover that life is lit, you ought to be able to desire to praise God forever. I know. I know to talk about praising God forever can sometimes be a challenge. In fact, sometimes it can be downright hard. Those times when uh, life seems to be closing in and nothing but negative seems to be surrounding me uh, may not really be able to see God. You might find those times and begin to wonder if God is even around for a moment. I would like to look at our passage from the book of Psalm, and I believe that there we might find just a little bit of help. 
this hat and glasses keeps messing with me. But anyway, I've got to keep it going. As we might find just, just a little bit of, bit of help. Uh, as we begin to look at this 30th Psalm, what we discover is that it's a psalm written by David. And it's offered as a dedication to the building of the temple. Uh, I would like to say that it is a poem of, or a psalm of, of faith. Uh, because David, while he desired to build a temple, Scripture would have us know that that was not God's plan for him. The temple was actually constructed by Solomon. David had began to make preparations. It was part of David's heart, but it was not David's task to complete. And his son, his son actually built the temple. David. David uh, desired to do something for God but was not allowed to. The potential for frustration. If we were to look at the life of David, a, a man who was favored by God, yet this man who was declared to be a man after God's own heart had a life filled with ups and downs. His life was not easy. Yes, we always hear sermons about David. David had a lot of high points in his life, uh, but David learned through his experiences that you got to take the good with the bad. One day you might be on top of the world, and three weeks later, might be even the next day, you feel like your whole world is falling apart. And while this was David's experience, uh, David was able to declare in this psalm, I will give God thanks forever. An amazing place to be, that whether you're up or down, wherever you find yourself, you're able to give God the praise. I believe it's also amazing because if uh, we're always giving God thanks and praise, what it means is that we're too busy focusing on our blessings, don't have time to worry or even think about all the bad stuff uh, that we go through. Yes, we must deal with all aspect, all aspects of life, the good and the bad. But you begin to understand that while we must go through stuff, you know that there is a blessing on the other side of through. We have the question for today is, what will it take to move to that place of David in this journey of faith so that we will be able to trust God enough to be okay when the nighttime comes? To be okay, understanding that we may have to weep sometimes, but knowing that we really don't have to worry because we know that the nighttime will pass. The sun will rise and we will have opportunity to wallow in the joys of God. Well, first of all, first of all, let's look at verses 1 through 3. First, we must recognize our blessings. The three verses from that we get, we must recognize our blessings. David begins with, I will exalt you for you have lifted me. Far too often for believers and, and especially young believers, we fail to give God credit for the things that he does in our lives. For beginners, a good starting point is the fact that he woke us up this morning. <laughs> You're blessed with good health. Uh, God opened the doors for you to get into college. Uh, and the list goes on and on. If we but open our eyes and see the blessings of God. And as we look at those first three, three verses, I like the part that says, And you do not let my enemies gloat over me. I think one of the worst things that have happened in life when we are engaging in activities or we are trying to accomplish certain goals maybe we may not reach it at one point and we our fear is that our peers our friends those who know me may begin to talk about me what david understands and what he's thankful for is that in all that he's done even in his successes as well as his failures god did not turn him over to his enemies so that they could gloat over him you know i get excited every now and then as I find myself on campus and you are talking with a, with a student and, and every now and then you will hear one of those students 
who will begin to reflect over their, their lives. Uh, perhaps they didn't do as well in, in, in high school, and, and they got these words, uh, and they would say, um, they said, I wouldn't make it, but if they could see me now, I have a 3.8 GPA. That's awesome. That is awesome, and it's a wonderful testimony, but wouldn't it be even more amazing if you could say, they said that I would not continue to walk with Jesus. Uh, oh, but uh, if they could see me now. I'm walking with Jesus. Uh, I'm finding favor in his sight, and the blessings are beginning to flow. I've got a 3.8. Oh, if they could see me now and say it. And say it knowing, really knowing who it is that blesses you. David. David uh, makes God personal when he declares, oh my God. It's you who has, who healed me. It's you who protected me when I could have died. You see, there's a call for us to step back. Step back and, 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 and just see, and rather not just see, but know what it is that God has done for you lately. Can I say that again? I stuttered a little bit. It's a call for us in life to step back and just see what God has done for us lately. And it would be nice if we could understand that God has even began blessing us today. Secondly, 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 in verses 4 through 5, we learn that we need to, in the midst of recognition, call others to join the praise party. In the midst of recognizing who God is and the blessings that he bestowed on, on, on me, every now and then, we need to call others to join the praise party. Understand there's power in numbers, and you are strengthened when others join you in that praise party. It's wonderful to be around and engaging with those who understand who God is and can help you lift him up because it's a blessing for your soul. And as, they, as you engage in the praise party, the scripture tells us why. There's a reason for prayer. He, he blesses us, and, and, and in that, understand one of the primary blessings is that God's anger lasts but for a moment. But his favor, his favor lasts for a lifetime. God's word informs us that there are consequences for our actions. You can't do just anything and be right with God. There are some things that we engage in, and the result of that engagement is heartache and pain. But God, but God. Scripture says if we turn from our wicked ways, uh, most times we know and have an idea what wicked is. Most often we know when we are being wicked. And the word says, when we turn from those ways, you begin to experience the favor of God and things began to turn around as you are growing through. If you really have that relationship with God through Christ Jesus, if you know that while you have stumbled and fell, that God in the person of Jesus the Christ is still there with you even in your falling. In fact, he will pick you up. He'll pick you up. What you began to know is that uh, oh, while it seems dark and dreary, while it looks like sometimes the darkness will, will never end, you can be assured that the darkness does not last forever. If you can just hold on and hold out, know that the sun will come up. You can wipe your eyes and get rid of the, the tears and experience the joy of God. Because it's a new day. It's a new day. And that, my dear friend, that is joy. Weeping, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Thirdly, 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 we've got to get rid of that false sense of security. We've got to get rid of that false sense of security. It's okay to be confident. 
but that confidence must be rooted in God through Christ Jesus. In verse 6, the psalmist says, When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. You see, when things are going good, you see yourself on top of the world. You've got good game, and it seems to be working pretty good. Uh, that's when we get cocky. That's when we get conceited, and, and it turns from being about God to being about me. Now, if you are in Christ, you are a person of faith. You will give God the credit in all things and understand there's a difference between saying the right thing and doing the right things. Too often we get caught up on using the right words, but we know the truth of where you stand when things begin to fall apart. Because when things begin to fall apart, if you are not uh, rooted in God in Christ Jesus, if you are not standing firm and trusting in Him, when things begin to fall apart, so do you. And that's when. That's when you can hear the words of, of David when he says, but when you hid your face, I was dismayed. You see, it's in those times when trust turns to doubt when joy turns to sadness because all of a sudden you don't feel the presence and the power of God in your midst. But guess what? That's okay too. That's okay because if it bothers you, it's a good thing. It can be a place of, of faith because you, you then have the ability to recognize and realize that you have a lost connection with God and you can understand that there's a need now to reconnect. That within itself is a blessing. And lastly, lastly as time is, is fleeting, lastly, never underestimate the power of prayer. Never underestimate the power of prayer. You see, far too often we find ourselves in dismay uh, when we turn to friends. Um, uh, can, I say, uh, can I rephrase it? When we turn to friends, and oftentimes when we find ourselves in dismay, rather than going to God, we, we go to friends. And those friends that we go to for, 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 for consolation and, and for, 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 for wise advice uh, probably are in no better shape than we are. Oftentimes what happens is we turn to the, to the pleasures of life. You know when you get down. I've probably been there too somewhere back there in those young years. You get down, you're feeling a little bad, you're feeling a little blue, you, you have situations, the world is crumbling, and you declare, I, I, I just need to get away from this, for I need to stop thinking about it. I'm going to go out and I'm going to have me a good time tonight, and, and, I'm, going, and I'm not even going, going to deal with this. But the problem is when you turn to the pleasures of life, uh, when you go home, go to bed, when you wake up the next day, all of the situation is still there. Things have not changed, and it's a good possibility that they might be a little worse than they were when you started. Need, 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 and I'm finding my place. When you've turned to friends and they, they don't work, when you've turned to the pleasures of life and they don't work, when you've tried everything else uh, and you still find yourself in darkness, uh, you still find yourself in the nighttime and you cannot see morning, you need to try God. There's an old song that says, take it to God in prayer. If you claim to be a believer, if you claim to be a child of God, then take your situation to the one who created you. Take it to, 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 to the God who knows all about you, the God who knows all about your circumstances and your situation, and watch him begin to move on your behalf. And understand, it doesn't take a long prayer that takes you three or four hours in a hymn humming voice. Uh, you can use a very short prayer just like David did. David declared, O oh Lord, be merciful to me. O oh Lord, help me. That's enough. 
and God will hear your cry. He already knows what your need is. He's just waiting for you to reconnect with him. He's not looking for a lot of words. He's looking for a sincere heart and an earnest cry. And the psalmist, the psalmist says that as you go to him with that sincere heart and that earnest cry, he will turn your weeping into dancing. As he lifts you up and turns things around in your life, you will wipe your weeping eyes and begin to dance. And you'll dance at the mere mentioning of the name of Jesus. The scripture says that he will remove your sackcloth that is those garments that you've been laying around crying in, and he will replace them with gladness. Understand, that's joy. You, you will not have to worry about what everybody else has. Won't have to be concerned about what you don't have. You'll find contentment simply by being in God's presence and experiencing the joy of being lifted up uh, through Christ Jesus. Jesus says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And in that drawing, when he draws you to him, amazing things begin to happen in your life. Uh, what you need to begin to do is draw near to Christ. <laughs> and understand, uh, uh, because of uh, being lifted up through Christ, being drawn to Christ for, for the blessings, for the lifting, for the drawing, you ought to be able to declare, I will forever be thankful. I will forever offer him my praises of thanksgiving. A reason for forever praise and thanksgiving. Let's pray. We come, God in heaven, we come back now and ask that you would be with us, gracious God. We ask that this word has not fallen on deaf ears and that some heart has been touched and moved. We pray, gracious God, that we will uh, rely even more so on you, that we will find ourselves in prayer with you, that we will find ourselves constantly praising you as we remember the blessings that you showered down upon us. We ask, gracious God, that you would fill us with your mercy, that you would extend to us your grace, that you would surround us in your love. And gracious God, that as we give your praise, we wallow in rejoicing, that we understand that, that we can begin dancing with you. Move, gracious God, as only you can, and always by the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I pray that this has been a blessing for you. I'm also praying that, that, that you're not seeing me in a black hat and black sunshades as I see me. And we pray that God will continue to move in your life as you begin to and continue to move around with COVID-19. We encourage you to be safe. As you uh, and greet those that you come in contact with, give them a, a hug yourself as a sign of your love and hugging them. And may God bless you each and every day. In the name of Jesus, amen and be